<laughs> but how do you do it then? I mean, it's like, wouldn't, wouldn't people then rather go to like a household name, like a, a big like chain store that they know instead well, see, of going to your page? That's the amazing part. So, right. So everyone's selling at the same price. All right. There's ways to kind of outrank because here's the thing, like you can outrank Wayfair, Walmart, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. It, it's not that hard to outrank them on the shopping network, number one. Uh, So I'm here with a man, Ernest. Uh, bro, I've seen you on stage. Your energy is electrifying. It's absolutely amazing. Pleasure having you here. Hey, man, glad to be here. That's fantastic. Well, let's speak about e-commerce, mm -hmm. your style. So a lot of people, they sell chunk, right? <laughs> yeah. You sell the big stuff. Yeah, more expensive, definitely. All right. Yeah, more expensive, you know, more like, you know, what I think is like a real business, real brands that you're working with, exactly. real companies, you know, not just sending random products to customers. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so what would be a typical client that you work with or a typical product that you work with? Yeah, so like one of the best known examples, uh, if you guys have watched the other video on the channel, is... Uh, uh, yeah, you, you're a YouTube <laughs> star by now, right? You're like uh, the most viewed... Uh, um, what was the most viewed video of the conference? On the Affiliate that World right yeah, there, channel, right. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so yeah, like electric fireplaces, you know, that's something that most people don't think about, but it's like a higher end luxury product. Average order value is like $800 to $1,200. Right. But people will spend all the way up to $3,000 for one product. And some buy more. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. A lot of people that actually buy one, typically, you know, they'll have like a, a room upstairs or somewhere in the basement, something like that. You know, the ideal customer that's looking for one of those makes an average of $150,000 a year. So they got a nice home and, you know, I like to take care of it. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, so if you sell more expensive items online, Things look a bit different in your marketing journey, right? Um, what do you do different than most other people? Man, so I mainly focus on driving traffic through shopping networks, right? Okay. Because uh, the amazing thing about search engines is the fact that they only trigger products when people are actively looking for them. So like, for example, like, when's the last time you've gone to Google and you put in, let's say, a swimming pool and you've seen a horse I shop, shadow? I shop for swimming pools all the time, man. <laughs> you know? It just, it just never happens, you know? Versus like, when you're running Facebook, you have to kind of give them an idea of like who your ideal customer is, and then they actively go and find it, which is the reverse through shopping networks, specifically like with Google as well as Bing, Yahoo, and AOL. All right, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so just to get this straight, uh, you work with the little like ads that Google displays when you click on that shopping part of thing, right? Or uh, that actually display like the image, you have all the prices and so forth. So what I figure is that for many products, the prices are all the same there. Yeah, a lot of times, especially like here's the great thing about the U.S. when you work with U.S. suppliers right. is we have this thing called a MAP policy. Yeah. It stands yeah. for minimum advertised price, yeah. which means that if you're working with a supplier that has that policy, everybody's selling at the same price. But how do you do it then? <laughs> I mean, it's like, wouldn't, wouldn't people then rather go to like a household name, like a a big like chain store that they know instead well, see, of going to your page that's the amazing part so right so everyone's selling at the same price all right there's ways to kind of outrank because here's the thing like you can outrank wayfair walmart yeah. amazon yeah. it's not that hard to outrank them on the shopping network number one uh then number two is the fact that if everyone has the same price most people would be willing to go with the person who's giving more value Right. right. So, for example, like Amazon, they're not running promotions. You know, they were not creating amazing landing pages with like, you know, deals and yeah. offers. Well, they can't. So that's what we have the ability to do in e-com. All right. <laughs> okay. So, so how can I imagine that? So, let's say I'm shopping for what? A swimming pool? Yeah. Let's uh, say a swimming pool. Right. I need a new pool. All right. Right. So I'm shopping a freaking uh, swimming pool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I go online. I go on Google. Search for purchase swimming pool. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then I see a couple of shops, right? I click through all of them because I want to exactly. see, I want to <laughs> see what's, what's the difference. And right? I, I don't that. get it, right? <laughs> so I start with, I don't know, maybe Walmart has a nice one. Let's check it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm clicking around and then I get to your page as well. What's different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's different is like immediately I'm coming with an offer that's at that that's in the header of the actual website. So it could be like a percentage off the swimming pool uh, that's going to be better than Walmart's deal. Because, you know, the thing is, and we didn't talk about it a lot because we don't have a lot of time, but like you want to go out and research what your competitors' offers are and either A, number one, model what they're doing, or B, which is going to win more long term, is create a better offer than what they have. Walmart's giving 5% off, I'll give 7% off. 
you know? And so I'm gonna meet them with that immediate offer at the top of the actual site. And then as they kind of scroll through the page, like I'm gonna incentivize them with other things, like maybe expedited processing. Maybe we install the pool. Walmart's not gonna do that. You know, uh, maybe we, you know, come up with some incentive that, all right, you buy one pool, we'll give you the floaties for free. It's like, wow, I get the pool and the floaties? <laughs> yeah, the floaties are like a fuck buck item. Exactly. Uh, uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, but uh, yeah, and it's I agree. Those, it's I, I, I'll go with things, you with that you know? too. All right, okay, cool. And how do you come up with ideas? I guess you brainstorm a lot. You've just been around for a while, so you understand. But also, I, I, I think you do a lot of, let's call it funnel hacking. You're basically just, Research. <laughs> exactly, right? yeah, you know, researching your competition, figuring out what it is that they're offering, but, you know, the great thing is, no matter what it is that you want to sell, because I'm not the guy that says, hey, you have to sell stuff that you're passionate about or that you like, you can just do research, like you just yeah. mentioned, like going out and researching and seeing what people are actively buying in their customer journey of owning a swimming pool. So it'd be like, okay, they, they want to buy a swimming pool, what do they need with the swimming pool? Clorox tabs, uh, what is it, the thing to measure, like the, the bleach level in yeah. the pool, like all that stuff. So like, even if I didn't know any Anything about pools, we could get that information just through research. All right. So then, how do you ship the pool? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where drop shipping comes into play, right? So, like, uh, the great thing is, like, even working with uh, a lot of U.S. manufacturers, that you know, drop shipping is becoming more uh, a well-known thing to do, right? And so, when I contact the suppliers and manufacturers, I ask them to set up a drop ship account, which means that they'll just send it directly to the consumer for me, so I don't have to worry about the overhead of like the inventory. Okay. All right. Well, that's fascinating. Okay, and why do you not run any typical Google search ads, right? Or, or, or... well, no, I run search ads. I don't run Facebook ads. <laughs> all right. Okay, I got you. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. I'm a Facebook kind of guy, but no. I, I, I dig what you're saying. <laughs> Because like you're getting people that have intent, right? Like the only time your products get triggered is either A, they're looking for exactly what you sell, or B, they're looking for something extremely similar to what you sell. So even if like, let's say you go to launch your store and you only have outdoor swimming pools, you don't have in-ground swimming pools, you know, so that person would still be in the same market for an indoor or outdoor, right? Yeah. And so that's the main thing versus like when you're running Facebook ads, you have to give Facebook the information and data to go out and find that person. Absolutely. Purchase you know? intent, of course, rocks the way that you do it and for your kind of product. Oh, and especially like high ticket, you know what I'm saying? Like, no one's going through Facebook and like, you know what? I'm going to drop three grand on the fireplace today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like your way of doing things. Thanks so much for doing that.